Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Carol, and today I have Reese with me. And we are going to be reading a story for week six. Can you believe it? Week six of our Sunday School Google Classroom. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Moses. And prior to Reese reading her part of the story, I just want to give you a little bit of information before she reads. <clears throat> this week's lesson is about a man named Moses. And Moses was called by God to lead God's people from the place they had been living, a place called Egypt, into a new home. And that new home was a place that God had called Canaan. Canaan was a place that was very beautiful and filled with everything God's people would ever need. When God called Moses to lead his people, Moses and all of God's people were slaves. They were people that were forced to work every day, all day, for free. And their master was an evil king named Pharaoh. Here's some interesting things that God told us about Pharaoh. He had a heart of stone, which means he was not very nice, not very friendly, and not very kind. He did not believe in God. He thought God was made up. He did not treat God's people very nicely. In fact, God's people lived horrible lives under this evil king. God told Moses that he would create a big cloud in the sky, big enough for all the people to see. And when that cloud arrived, Moses was supposed to gather all the people and head into the desert to start their long journey, which was going to take 40 years. Boys and girls, put your hands up. You have 10 fingers. Let's count out 40. 10, 20, 30, 40. They were going to travel 40 years in the desert to get to their new home. But before they got to this new home, they were blocked by a giant sea. There was no way to get around it. And there was definitely no bridge for people to walk over. And what's worse? Oh, the Pharaoh discovered that the people had left and sent his troops after them to capture them and bring them back. At just the right time, God did an amazing thing for Moses and his people. Let's find out what God did for his people. But Reese is going to read a story called Signs and Wonders. And it's in our The Story for Children. That's our storybook Bible that we read a lot of. And he's going to talk about some of the things that God did because Pharaoh was so mean to everybody and didn't believe in God. He thought he was made up. But we know God isn't made up. So God did some things to prove to Pharaoh that, oh, he indeed is not made up and that he should believe in him. So go ahead. Reese is going to read our story called Signs and Wonders. Moses entered Pharaoh's throne room. The God of the Hebrews wanted his people to worship him in the desert. Let the people go and worship God. No, Pharaoh said, I need them here. God Almighty is angry with you, Pharaoh. He will cause things to happen if you don't listen. So God sent a plague, the Nile River. Flowed red with blood, the water in all the ponds, pools, and, mount and fountains turned to blood. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the water in Egypt, in Egypt flowed clean and sweet and clear again. A week later, Moses went to Pharaoh. Let my people go. Pharaoh said no. So God sent a second plague to show Pharaoh his power. Frogs invaded Egypt. They splatted, splatted in the waters. They rolled in the dirt. They climbed in the windows and jumped on the beds. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the frogs jumped back into the Nile River where they belonged. Then God sent a third plague and dust on the ground turned into teeny, nasty nuggets. Gnats. Those Nats. are little bugs. They're really tiny. Okay. 
They buzzed in the air, they landed on the people and the animals. Moses went to Pharaoh again and said, let my people go. Pharaoh said no. God sent a fourth plague. This swarm of flies poured into Pharaoh's place and the house of the Egyptians. Every building, every barn, every portion kitchen was covered with flies. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and all the flies went away. Here's the pictures. Mm. Oh, look at, oh, there's the flies. Gnats. Gnats. Oh, here's all frogs. those frogs. Oh, what are these? Ooh. That's oh. So the flies. Ooh, nasty. Ooh. Oh. God warned. If he would have if he would have obeyed God and listened, none of these things would have happened. Let's see what else is gonna happen. Then God sent a fifth plague. All the livestock in the field of Egypt died. The horses, donkeys, camels, and cattle, sheep and goats fell over dead. But Pharaoh would not let God's people go. Then God told Moses to throw handfuls of soot from the furnace into the air. He did a he did, and nasty sores called boils broke out on the people and the animals. That was the sixth plague. Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Pharaoh said no. So God sent a seventh plague. He said hail and thunder and lightning. It was the worst storm Egypt had ever seen. The hail flattened the crops in the field and stripped the leaves off the trees. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the hailstorms ended. Then God sent the eighth plague. Swarms of locusts co Locus? locust covered the land. They ate all the plants in every tree. The insects filled the house of Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the wind blew the locusts away. Then God told Moses to point to the sky. Moses did, and suddenly a thick darkness covered Egypt. For three days, the people couldn't see anything. That was the ninth plague. God told Moses he had one more plague at midnight. The Lord said, I will go through the land of Egypt. Every firstborn son in every household will die. But my people will be safe. This will be the worst plague of all. Then Pharaoh will let my people go. It all happened just as God said. Get out now, cried Pharaoh. Take what you need and leave. So Moses led God's people out of Egypt. Oh, here's so some pictures. pictures. Oh, look, boys and girls. Oh, look at the animals. The they all have sores. Yeah, yuck. Yeah, look at the locust. It was terrible. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen. He wouldn't let the people go. Every time, God, one more thing is going to have to happen because you're not listening. Let's see what happens now. Moses led the people through the desert to the shore of the Red Sea. The people looked straight ahead and saw only water. They turned around and saw Pharaoh's army charging across the desert. We are going to die, they cried. Don't be afraid. The Lord will fight for you, Moses said. Be calm and watch what God will do. Let's see. They don't know what to do. How are they going to get through? What What will God do? Well, you know, in Sunday school, boys and girls, we learned what God does, but let's find out in our story. Moses raised his staff toward the sea. Suddenly the wind blew and the water piled up into huge walls, leaving a dry path through the center of the Red Sea. The people walked to the other side on the dry ground God provided. Pharaoh's chariot and shoulders sol soldiers um, raced after the people. When the entire army was in the middle of the sea, God made the walls of the water crash into them. The sea swallowed the Egyptian army, the chariot, and the horses. But God's people were safe on the other side. Yeah. See, boys and girls? Look at that. Can you see the water? Look at it. And that's where God's people went, right through the middle. And then when the Pharaoh and his army got into the middle of the Red Sea, what did God do? Pshhh. Brought the water down on top of them. And they were all swallowed up in the sea, but God's people were safe on the other side. And God's message to them 
and to us as I am your heavenly Father watching over you day and night. I will love you and protect you wherever you go. I will save you even when you think things are impossible. By my power, I will show the nations that you are my people and I am your God. You remember we say, boys and girls, that you pray to God when you think, well, when things are going bad and, and you just think, I, oh, what am I going to do? All you have to do is put your faith in God and say a prayer and ask for God's help and he will always be there to help you. So I want you to remember that God loves you all the time, day and night, just like we just read, and that he is with you every step of the way. So when you think things are hard or you can't do something, just ask God to help you. He's always there to do that. So next week, I, I don't even know what our story is going to be. I'm excited to continue reading to you. And I was so grateful that Reese wanted to read with you today. It's very nice to have her help me. So I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful week. And as I always close, what do I say? Yep, blessings to you all. Bye-bye.